Hello and welcome to Real Estate Divas. Today we are talking to Kaylee McMahon and she is going to give us some tips on how to protect ourselves. Every time when we're getting into partnerships, we need to know these things and sometimes we think about it too late. So stay tuned. Right after this, we're going to get her input. Hi there, and welcome back to Real Estate Divas. I'm Jaylee Thompson, and this is my lovely co-host, Kristen Gerst. And today we are talking to Kaylee McMahon, and you are gonna share some tips and tricks for us. Hey, about... we've, we've all had bad partners. Oh, every single one of us. I mean, Listen. I've learned a ton of lessons from having bad partners on yeah. stuff, and I've gotten burned, and I've lost thousands upon thousands of dollars because I was dumb. Well, I mean, part of it's, it's not, it's being too trusting, you know, I think, I think that's what ends up happening so often is we go into stuff and we're too trusting, mm -hmm. you know, and we think this is, Hey, this, this is, this looks great right now. Um, so having been through some stuff, what would you say was some of your best takeaways? I mean, every person has their own experience with something like this, right? So I couldn't say that my experience is the same as it is for everybody else. Um, through my lens, however, uh, I had to end up looking at myself and figure out what is it uh, as far as my behavior that caused this to happen. And it's taken years of layers and layers and keeping going to figure out. At first, I thought I figured it out. And then I was like, no, now that's the, the cause. So for me, it was like you said, uh, being a little bit too open. But for me personally, because of my past, I become, um, I create false intimacy with other women specifically and other people uh, to try to get close as fast as possible, but that's not natural. That's not how it works, right? It has to be earned, whether it's business or personal. Um, and so you don't need to go to somebody and spill every detail of everything that you've ever been through when you don't know them. <laughs> so that's number one for me. Number two, again, is like doing your due diligence on that person. I'll come back to that, but also doing your due diligence on what it is that you're signing up for. I mean, very basic. So I found that I had stories that I told myself about what I was not good at. For example, reading legal contracts. Uh, it went back for me uh, to an eye problem that I had and had wearing glasses and being made fun of and all kinds of things that I told myself I was bad at reading uh, legal documents or detailed documents. And so then I wouldn't do it. I'd avoid it and not advocate for myself. And it's my job to go through every single word. And if I don't understand something, that's an opportunity, whether it is get on a three-way call with the other partner and the attorney, clarify, um, but also knowing here's another piece of advice um, that I've noticed in general is that all legal contracts, when they're handed to you, are never in your favor, ever. The attorney writing it doesn't care about the other party, neither does the other partner. Sorry, that's just the way it goes. So it's your job to advocate for yourself and be able to see what is not in your favor in that contract and be able to then go negotiate it every single time someone hands you something. So I uh, I think that's excellent advice. I Absolutely. mean, one, always read your legal documents. If you are involved in a deal, read every single one. I don't care how hard it is. I, Take three I, days to do it. I see yeah. it. I see it on just notes that I buy. Yeah. And it's shocking what people have You've signed. You told me, so, like, uh, it's crazy. It's shocking what I've seen in this last year, like the the notes, like the recording being done, everything being done and and filed under the wrong names. You don't even own the property. Mm -hmm. Like, that's and that, then you don't happened. know until you go to flip the property, you know? And I was like, how did you or not know? Or taxes come up or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, no, and, and you're and always and liable for any cost. And, yep. and, I, you know, and it is important to know, you know, I didn't do background checks on who I was partnered with. You know, I thought, oh, he's an attorney, you know, so he's going to. Done, gonna, done, done. Right. Yeah. And now I know that, yeah, an attorney means you better check better them. seriously. <laughs> seriously check them extra yeah. because they're going to be the worst. And I mean, I, yeah, I was like, I never read anything because I'm like, oh, an attorney put this together. So, of course, I'm protected. But yeah, I mean, when you hire an attorney to represent you, they're trying to do things to keep you winning, whatever that means. You know what I mean? So they're experts in making sure that word 
uh, words You're and protect, things that person's work protected. in your favor, regardless if it's right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. Do you do background checks now? On so sort of. Uh, that's an interesting thing to bring up because what I first of all Google search not good enough. Sorry, doesn't mean anything. Uh, then if you run a background check, there's different levels of something that you can do online. You could do it for a couple hundred bucks. You know, no big deal. Um, but because I've been through the ringer as far as uh, needing to find things that you could have never found in a background check, even hiring a PI couldn't have found this stuff. Um, I actually have a back-end security company that I created out of necessity to be able to find. So they, here's the thing that sounds fuzzy and we ignore it because there's no college class on this to trust but verify. But how do you verify? How do you really see maybe a potential lawsuit that didn't go through? How do you see their character, their behaviors that throughout time don't change? That pattern is still the same, regardless of if you're in the IT industry, if you're in car sales, if you're in real estate, it will still follow you. But how do you cross check? Do you ask for a resume? You know what I mean? Like that's References. not gonna, yep. right? Uh, and that always doesn't work either because then, oh, I'm gonna pick the best three family friends of mine or whatever that exactly. will you know, be my gangster buddies and say whatever I need them to say. So I've created a, a service for myself and for others, essentially, you know, if you're wanting to take that next step and get financially in bed with someone, that's the step to know what are their past behavior patterns? What have they done to other people? What have they threatened other people into silence with, you know, that obviously is not going to become public at any time, or maybe they passed away, you know, and you don't know that. So um, there, there's a way to be able to see all of their behavior patterns uh, on the dark web, um, on regular internet. Uh, you can see everything they've ever done online. Um, and much more, you know, especially if it, you just need to know how to make that decision. And that would be your final, like you go get to know them. I, I hang out with people for about a year before I partner now, try to travel with them, see what they do with some stress. Then in addition to that, then I, before signing the dotted line check, you know, cause again, those behavior patterns from the past will just repeat. So Absolutely. do you, do you want to be in the, the way of that next pattern or is this something you can deal with? You know, you'll, you'll be able to really see you know what we, we all aren't perfect right but is that something you can deal with or yeah. is it something that's like a no what about giving them you know you when you're when you're partnered with somebody you've got to give them your personal information you both have it i mean you're both are going to yeah. have your birth date you're both going to have your social security number um i know now that i have my credit locked down and guarded because i want to know if anybody tries to yeah that's happened to me as well Yep, 100% um, to, to get vengeance on you sometimes too. You know what I mean? So I, I haven't had that, I thank God, but you yeah, know, ruin still. your credit score. So, you, so you're tanked, so you can't go get any more loans. You know what I mean? Like, and, and depending on what type of job you're getting, you know, if you need that credit score to do something, yeah, yeah. There's, there's plenty of ways that they can get their own evil recourse, you know? Yep. Um, I just had somebody take out a $25,000 credit card and run it all up. And then, oh my goodness. Oh God. Yeah. Well, this was, this is years ago now, Yeah. Yeah. but that's why I did it. Yeah. And I, I, we, I even know who did it. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a secret, you know, yeah. but you know, I'm like, how do I protect myself against this in the future? And I found that the only way was to keep everything locked down. Yep. And to always check. And real estate investors, like, I would never check my credit. Yeah. Never. I'm like, I don't want anybody to pull it. I don't want any, yep. I don't want to even touch it. So I didn't even know it was there. And it had been, you know, three years or something. And I'm like, real estate investors, especially if you're in the habit of getting loans, right. need to be checking. Right. right. And here's the thing that I heard from a billionaire last week. You know what I mean? They're like, I just freeze everything all the time. Mm -hmm. They own a Experian type company. So they understand what's floating around and who has access to it. And they're like, literally, if you're, what are you buying a new house every day? You know, we don't do that many deals where you can't conscious, conscientiously go, okay, now I'm going to email and then they unlock it for 24 hours. You go ahead and do the credit and then it locks back up again. But I, unlo people. I unlock it for like, I'm like, you, okay, you got two, three hours tops. There we go. I do yeah. it and then it's good. We're done. Well, then I just learned something because I've never locked mine down. It's free. Uh, it's, well, it's mm. not free. You got to pay 30 bucks a month to. Oh, really? Oh, I'd yeah. get a freeze with TransUnion Experian and, and the other one. Yeah, I've got, well, I've got credit monitoring. So mm -hmm. it's like, I pay True. like $30 a month oh, gotcha. to TransUnion and Equifax. And then I pay another $30 to Experian, but then I can just log in and I can unlock them or lock them. Got it. But it's like two separate things. Hmm. 
to be able to do that, but you should. I mean, cybersecurity is a huge thing these days. So whether it's just your financial information or just in general, you know what I mean? I'll tell you that on my computer, because I've dealt with data mining, you know, on my devices, it's so easy for there to literally be an attachment attached to a link in your text, uh, in your email, et cetera, where, um, I'm dealing with investors too. That's the other thing that I keep telling other operators. I'm like, we're, we're emailing about like, here's my wiring instructions attached to this doc or to attached to this email. You know what I mean? It's yeah. And, and anyone can hack your email essentially. And so unless you have a Swiss encrypted server, so for example, a free account at like protonmail.com, um, then if you're doing a raise, for example, and you're telling investors why are here someone, I don't know if y'all know this, but $288 billion were stolen from mortgage companies and title companies in 2020, uh, because those that could, uh, get into your email through multiple means, could essentially resend an email to that bank, uh, the investor, the uh, house seller, et cetera, that's wiring funds and do another document that looks exactly like the other document, watermarked everything that just has, oh, sorry, I got the wiring information incorrect. Here, here it is. And they send it and the bank will never insure those funds leaving. So it's, it's a loss and they just yes. steal it. Wow. So that's one thing. But so for me, I have a, um, a VPN on my computer and all my devices, $2 mm -hmm. a month and it covers up your IP address. So for example, if money's coming in or money's leaving, and it's maybe you have one LLC that's receiving all the funds, like someone couldn't then go track where it's coming from and then attack that LLC or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, and then same thing with um, the encrypted email server, just being something that since it's encrypted, not even like the CIA can get into your email. So I also have very sensitive conversations with investors via video. By the way, FaceTime is encrypted and so is um, uh, Signal. So if you're on that app, uh, you can do a video, you can do a voice, you can do uh, photos also. And like I said, even the CIA can't even get into those messages. So you can share sensitive information without fear of anyone um, hurting you. So it's important to connect to you. So that's, my, that's good information. So my cousins have used that when they have. needed to get to a safe place and you need to communicate with the person on the other end and make sure there's no interception, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, that is great. Well, and one of the other things that she mentioned right before the show is, let's say you end up in that partnership and you are, you know, it, it's too late. You're in it. And now what? Um, what was one of the things that you ended up doing? So in, in that partnership, essentially, again, when, when it's too late, I've also learned the technique of don't put yourself in a corner, like don't be aggressed. So if you are being threatened um, or stalked or followed or blackmailed or et cetera, don't let that intimidate you and put you into a corner where you go quiet and then you become on defense at that point. And then you spend years of your life just defending yourself, you know, mm -hmm. to, to get back to reality. So instead stay on offense. And what you can do is know that when somebody is doing all those behaviors I just mentioned, it, was, it is never their first time ever doing that, ever. Yeah. Every time I deal with a contractor doing it, anyone, doesn't matter if they're a partner, They've done it before and they've gotten away with it and it's criminal. Um, and so the point is, is making sure that you're screenshotting, you're putting everything in email, uh, anything that, for example, if they try to call you, force them into some written form of that or and or transcribe voicemails. Uh, I don't know where this is all going to be shown, but Texas is a single party disclosure state. So if you're ever in a sensitive situation, you can you can record. Uh, one side can record, you know, to make sure, again, you keep accountability because that has helped me. However weird it makes you feel, get over it because you have to advocate for yourself. Nobody else will ever protect you, whether you end up in court or before just using the information to keep them off of you. Absolutely. At least just to keep the aggression off of you because you could spend years being so upset and being in that spiral, you know, instead of saying, hmm, I see you, you did this and this and this. Well, that what is, and like here, here are my screenshots. Yeah. What would you like proof. to do about it? Yeah. Or you don't even have to show them the screenshots. Sometimes you just mention it to them in text or in writing in an email and they go, yeah. they go, ooh, yeah. ooh, I did do that. So she must have proof. And that sometimes <laughs> is enough. But that's also one of those things, like I, my attorney told me that years ago. Um, and for that reason, like uh, my husband makes fun of me because my email is so full. Like I have so many emails that I never delete. And I have so many texts that I never, and I was like, no, I don't delete this stuff because I need it. I need there to be a trail so that I can go, actually, you know, on November 1st of 2019, you did this, you yeah. know, so I can always go back to that. Um, That's an it's incredible just, skill it's to hone. Really important yes. to have that. Um, if I can avoid, if there's if there's any type of disruption or something, you know, disagreement that's going on, I stay off the phone. I do not make a phone call. It's going to be in writing. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So you can't say that enough. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And and that's it. And it just should give you some kind of peace of mind and calm that you know you just documented, documented, documented. And I've had situations where there wasn't even any kind of aggression that was happening at the time, or I couldn't even see it coming yet. But I knew people were doing things that were unethical, that were misrepresentation of what they were doing. And so I went ahead and just started documenting and then kept it in a Dropbox folder. And later go. on, someone tried to take my trademark and I said, hold on, look what I'm privy to. And they went away. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And done. I was like, okay, you, you want to go there? All right, let's go talk to the federal government. You yeah. know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. you did some stuff. Yeah. Nice. So protect yourself and advocate for yourself because nobody else will do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. I know sometimes it's hard. People get on here and, and just in general, it's hard to, it, it's emotional. It's hard to talk about whenever things have gone bad, whether it's a relationship or contractors or whatever it is, you know, those partnerships in any way, shape or form, they're difficult because your, your ego, you take a hit, but it's also a learning experience. Um, and it's great to share. So and here's another little it. tip that I just recently continue to always fall on. Um, I don't know what your situation is with your relationships, your family life, where you live, how your whole life is set up, but along with that false intimacy, um, never, ever, ever, ever let anyone else know that you're alone, ever. And I don't mean alone at home. I don't mean alone in a, without a relationship. Uh, any form of I don't have family, I don't have so, of a support system. Yes. Uh, they should never know that. Always, whether it's I have this now and so I feel so much more confidence going into scary things because I have a big scary uncle yeah. that will F you up <laughs> if you mess with me. And, and it really, it works. And sometimes scary uncle shows up at meetings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Quiet in the corner. Yeah. So like never, never let anyone know you're alone ever because yeah. you will get taken advantage of. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. I appreciate it. Yeah. 100%. And uh, how do people get a hold of you? Yep. Um, if you're interested in what I just mentioned with all the learning curve that I've uh, climbed up and, and uh, created solutions from, because it was, there's obviously a use case for it, um, you can text me at 214-699-8810, Big Sister Security, and I'd be happy to give you more information about what we just talked about. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. And if they want to get a hold of you online, The Apartment Diva, uh, I mean, apartment. apartment Queen. Apartment Queen. Yeah, yeah. I have another yeah. website, theapartmentqueen.com. There's plenty of information there about real estate investments as well. Fantastic. Excellent. And uh, I'm Kristen Gerst uh, with Capricorn Mortgage. Send me your owner finance mortgage notes to buy. Please like, subscribe, and follow the Real Estate Divas podcast. And uh, make sure and listen to it wherever you get your podcast from. And I'm Jaylee Thompson with Texel Real Estate and Real Estate Reformation. And yeah, what she said, like, follow, <laughs> you know, make some comments, ask some questions. We'd love to get to know y'all. Thanks so much. Bye.